Yes, I wouldn't say it. Right. I, mm-hmm. I wouldn't. I wouldn't have it outside of the same family, if you will. Okay. You know, for example, if the, this beige color of the church exists, I wouldn't take this to um, a gray. And I, I wouldn't want it visually. I think the visual uh, color from the original structure going across is, is just fine. Mm-hmm. I think when we get it down to f- making it feel like that, we've also extended the porch integrity to the um, outdoor seating area. I, I think that's where it starts to, to change. I, li- I like the, that it, we know it's the same building from the roof lines up, but from down below, I'm not quite sure that's necessary. I just don't like, I, I wouldn't prefer that the color of the porch and your outdoor dining to take that cedar and paint it all white. I, I think that there, that there needs to be a separation. Right. Yeah. So I, I'm, I'm going to interrupt one more time. I'm so very sorry. Roger, can you confirm that you've started to record the meeting now? Yes, we, we are recording now. Excellent. So this is the ZARC meeting, February 23rd, working with the Cohatch Project at 75 North Main. I'm sorry. Please do continue. Do you need us to identify ourselves by name when we say something? I think we'll be okay. Yes, when you say something would be fabulous. Thank you. Um, This is Todd Rotman. Um, I love the comments that Tom and Kara were making in regards to um, the individuality of the Southern part versus the North part being respectful but not trying to match. I think those are really good comments. I I just have this, Tom Castellini. I just have one other just suggestion or, or visual on the <clears throat> outdoor seating on the north end of the outdoor seating prior to you get to the single door. Mm-hmm. Uh, if that roof line was extended almost to the gutter, then it, it would, yes, that roof line across, it, it, would, it, it would then make this entrance even more special but we leave this, this window kind of becomes a widow over here. Mm, right. So, I mean, it's not a big thing, but that roof line, mm-hmm. if that roof was extended, I think it, it, it then takes this whole visual across from the church to the new structure and really now brings it in. There's this one little widow gap that falls off that I think would be a nice, nice detail. Um, I and see. not an expensive detail, but it, you get rid of that widow window. So, so wait, so you're saying to expand the porch or to get rid of that window? No, I would no, I would say just expand the roof. To expand the roof. And have the roof overhang to hide that. So that's no longer a visual widow there. Mm-hmm. I see, I see. Yeah. Okay. I mean, obviously we if we do that, we have to think about the, the 12-foot bay module um yeah. you know to expand yeah. it if we if we want to kind of keep that and then that means that you know it also need to expand what, on the outside to be similar. what is what is that probably four feet um i would say nice. probably less than that i would say maybe three yeah. maybe less than three mm-hmm. so this is like three feet on center like this this rafter mm-hmm. here you can see yeah yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. so Is that might be less than three, three. So I'm, I'm not sh- I, I'm I'm not an architect or an engineer, but I'm sure that to add two or three feet won't make any difference in your spacing for your seating underneath. It actually can. It, it just becomes a a visual. You, I don't think you have to change anything to do it. Yeah, I think Tom. I think you're. Are we saying the post stays where it is, and it's just the roof of it? Yes, that's correct. Yeah, the post stays where it is. It's just that three feet or less extension of the roof that uh, hides the widow. I see. And then, so then it makes the differences where this used to be a house and this used to, was the church. So it's a clear separation between the two structures. Well, just to clarify, that is not used to be a house. I believe they, it, was they, it was a house. They demolished the house. They added on to the church. Mm-hmm. So it's it should be always be part of the church from a yeah. structure standpoint. Yeah. 
Can I, um, this is Steve Freeland. Can I ask a few things on the signage? Sure. Uh, there's two observations. Are either or both of these signs going to be lit electronically or are they just day signs? Oh, that's a good question. Yes. Uh, we have done it both. Um, I would I would almost want to say that typically we want it to be just the ex, ex, still externally lit sign. So the sign itself is not um, illumin it's not self illuminating. Okay. It's not internally illuminated. My uh, my first observation on this project was how pleased I am to see what you've done with the extension in the front add on. Um, I seem to kind of get negative vibes when I see the co hatch kind of popped right into that spot. For some reason or other, it just doesn't, for me, it just doesn't belong there. Mm -hmm. um, I recognize the need to brand it and name it. I, I just find that sign is there just kind of not a fit. Second question is on the North High, uh, that to me looks like an elevated sign. So it looks like it's anchored and then it, it goes up. How high does that sign go? Do you know? Um. That's probably about three feet high. Okay. Um, I think it's just my own personal preference. I'm just not enamored with the signage. Um, the cohatch doesn't look like it really belongs there and it's, it's not consistent with the look. And then the, the North High is, is a sign that's just kind of popped on the roof and it's not creative. I like the signage itself. It just strikes mm -hmm. me as, as maybe it's I don't know. I'm curious if there's other ideas for signage. Um, I don't have a strong feeling about those the way they are, but I'm just curious of all options or other options for signage. If I could, Tom Castellini here, Steve, if I can follow up on that. First of all, I think when you get into the Zionsville zoning side of the signage, mm -hmm. uh, you'll find that uh, lit signs are, are going to be very, very difficult. Mm -hmm. Uh, to get past. If you go through the village, you'll notice there are no lit signs. Mm -hmm. And uh, some of the uh, restaurants that may have an electronic sign on the inside that says open, mm -hmm. I think those those aren't long for life. Mm. And yeah, I'm, uh, I'm never that they be lit either, by the way. No, no, I'm just for their information. I'm, I'm letting them yeah. know that uh, a, a lit sign is, is going to be very difficult. Mm -hmm. And then when this goes to the VAC and or the VCA and it, it gets open to the public. I can tell you right now that within the Zionsville um, Village Association um, <clears throat> to keep you from any hardships of that, any lit signs uh, will will not be. Will so when you say lit sign, you mean external and internal doesn't matter, it will not be lit, the sign. Correct. Nor, uh, nor okay. lit sign, nor a lit sign in the window. You know, so you well, I, th okay. I think that I think I think that when you uh, go through the the regulations for signage in the village, you'll you'll see. Mm -hmm. But uh, because good. that um, the 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 North High Brewery at three foot that never go, mm -hmm. and 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 at the, the scale of the co hatch that you have in the entryway, that would that would not meet the okay. uh, I see. requirements. So, okay. and as um, Steve was saying earlier, it's more like the sign that you have at the north end of the village of the building where the, the way the cohatch is there. The, the, that kind of signage, I think you'll have an easier time and um, will come closer to um, the village signage laws, if you will. Okay. Um, this is Karen Weber, and I apologize. I have to jump off, but I just wanted to say I think this is a very well thought for design, and I'm very excited about it. And I think there's going to be lots of little tweaks, but it's 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 very well done. So thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Carol Mullet here. Um, I too am really excited to see this beautiful building given a new life and and to have it used. Um, I live in the village and walk by it very often and I think it will be exciting. Going back to the last discussion on signage, when, when we say a lit sign, you're referring to a sign that has its own lighting. Yeah. You can have a sign that has a light shining on it so you can uh, okay. see it, but okay. that's, that's not what 
that's the type of signage that you will find in Zionsville. Gotcha. You put up a sign and then you shine a light on it so people can read it at night, but gotcha. you don't have it lighted from within with bulbs. Gotcha, mm -hmm. gotcha. So it's it's kind of a a language thing, I guess. But right, yeah, right. Thank, thank you. If, if we didn't have any lights at all, they wouldn't do much good in the evening. <laughs> That's what I was going to ask. <laughs> uh, I, I meant more like uh, uh, the sign itself being uh, right, gotcha. lit from mm -hmm. the interior. Gotcha, gotcha. Right. And but I, I do like the, the, the way you have preserved the, the flow of the building. Um, I think two... There was a question about how to do the ramp and the the idea of it being something other than wood also partly because wood can be more slippery when when it's wet or when there's snow so i think again maybe concrete even though i am not a fan of concrete in general it's <laughs> it's probably more effective would last longer and and maybe even safer and easier to clean the snow off of and all of those things. Yeah, if you look at the porch on the church, it does have the brick base around it. Yeah. That could be something you could look at for the new ramp and porch to have a brick. But I would really like that. That I think that would be a wonderful tie-in. Um, and, 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 mentioned several weeks ago when we talked, um, you know, we are not a code review body. We're not a zoning body. We're purely design. So when we're making comments about the signage, we're definitely trying to help you, but we don't have a final say in that. But I think as a committee, what we're saying from a design standpoint, we the building. And um, from a wayfinding um, point of view, people are going to it's a pretty narrow street. People are going to be coming by this. They won't see those signs anyway. So, you know, some sort of blade sign that is people, you know, and this is kind of at the end of the retail area. To have a sign that somebody on a sidewalk a block away could see um, could be helpful, you know, to kind of draw people down to this end. Um, so, uh, blade signs or signs that stick out that are uh, visible from the sidewalk or even from driving, you know, would do you guys good. And uh, Tom Castellini again, uh, Todd, just to add to that, uh, the town is working on a wayfinding system. Mm -hmm. And um, and I think that that's well into the, the progress of a new wayfinding system throughout the entire village. That you may just be incorporated into that new system. I think Mike had mentioned this um, before he got off um, of the call that we will want to see cut sheets for any type of fixture, you know, be it a light fixture or a mailbox or anything that's gonna be attached to the building ceiling fans. You know, we need to know the style and the colors of that. So next presentation if you have all of those items then you know that would got it have any other comments from the committee at this time <clears throat> uh no i have to get off i uh, tom castellini i have to get off as well uh john thank you for bringing this project to zionsville and thank you for your wonderful design um we certainly appreciate uh, the thoughtfulness, Tim, and and um, we'll look forward to working with you down the road. So yeah, thank you, you, all, thank you all have a great day. I think this would be a, is going to be a wonderful addition to Zionsville if our town fathers are, <laughs> you know, you, you still have some uh, hurdles to go through. So thank you so much. Uh, Janice, it was great seeing you again. Thank you. Thank you. I'm and actually, happy everybody to have on the committee, we, have, we haven't seen each other in a year, so you, <laughs> almost a year to date. So thanks for the opportunity to bring us back together again, and we hope to uh, hear from you again here for our next meeting.
Uh, formally, we wave to each other now and then in town. So that's um, about it. <laughs> <laughs> well, that new beard, I didn't, I haven't recognized, I wouldn't have recognized you, Steve. You got your own. Yeah, came yeah. with the vaccine, by the way. <laughs> so I don't know if Todd um, is still on or Tom, yep. maybe you can offer the group what next steps for this project might be. Our next meeting, I believe, is March 23rd. Yep. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, Todd will, Todd will help you there. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so our next meeting is March the 23rd. And I think everybody gave their comments today. I don't think there's going to be any comments following this meeting at all. I think you've heard everything, you know, that we're thinking. And so if you can make those updates and have it ready for the next uh, meeting. Um, in the interim, if you have questions about direction, you want to bounce some ideas, um, please send it to me. You know, I can take a look at it. I can um, share it with another member if I, you know, question it. Just um, you have that resource between now and then. Um, but we would like to see the proposal, you know, with the tweaks and the updated budget numbers and things we talked about um, on March. And, and hopefully, you know, if it looks good, we can maybe get an approval there or just have a few items to clean up after that. Very good. And I would just add, Todd, if you don't mind, I would just add that um, when you get to the point where you're ready to resubmit, please copy me as well so I can get those materials to the group. Okay. okay. And all, as Todd said, always feel free to within the month, within the month to reach out to Todd and, and uh, then he will electronically share it with us prior to that meeting. So we are prepared when you arrive. Yeah. And, and to echo, I think what everybody has said, um, we're super excited about this project. Um, great reuse of this space. It'll be great to activate this end of Main Street. Um, you know, the conversation that I had with Tim and Eliza previously, you know, I commend them on their thoughtfulness on connections to the existing building. And um, so kudos to them, kudos to John and your team for finding a way to reutilize this building. We definitely want to, you know, work with you and uh, make it as great as possible. And it'll be something I think we'll all be very proud of. So thank you guys. Yes, once Here. again, it's a wonderful addition to the village. Thank you very much. All righty, ciao, ciao, everyone. All right. Thank you so much, guys. Right. Thanks so, for your time. Have a good day. Yeah. Thank you, everybody. Oh, yeah. are you, can, are you uh, ending a the motion, meeting? A motion to adjourn, anybody? Carol Mullet to adjourn. Second. <laughs> All right. Trump 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 Hi. Ciao, ciao. Trump. Thank you. Thank All you right. very much. Bye. 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 Bye.